Magic have won it all in 2020. Mookie Betts. Crunch him. Left field. They're going to make big signings. They're going to make impact trades. I don't care how many times this team rips my heart out, I'll never stop loving the Los Angeles Dodgers. Think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here, credential member of Dodgers Media. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Now, if you haven't yet, do us a huge favor and subscribe to the number one Dodgers YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. We are closing in on 90K subscribers. And the second we do, we're giving away another jersey. And all you have to do to be eligible to win that jersey is very easy. One, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and comment done down below. But I also want all of your Dodgers takes. Let me know down below in the comment section. What is your reaction to the Dodgers calling up top prospect Andy Pajes and what kind of impact you think he can have on this year's team? How concerned are you about the bottom of the lineup? What are your thoughts on the Dodgers first little skid of the season? Let me know. And of course, you know, we start every single episode with the Dodgers dugout live poll question of the show. I asked you guys over on the X. Andy Pajes will end up having a big impact on the Dodgers in 2024. And 82% of you say yes, while 18% of you say yes no and i see a comment underneath said he's already contributed more than taylor and lux ouch that's a finish him to start off the finish show him. and of course we're always looking for your fire takes all of your comments about your boys in blue and when you give a take if it's a super chat you're going to be automatically answered one and two we're going to feature you on the screen we're also looking for all your takes for the seventh inning stretch later in the show i've got my super producer to my left mr antonio looking for all your takes throughout the show show so be sure to drop those of course you know how we start every episode of dodgers dugout live let me know where you're representing dodgers nation from we got golf for me too says done great move calling up andy pajes jonas bass says padres come back and win and now a loss to the nationals got a lot of thoughts on that we will dive into that in a couple seconds here michael bush trade looks worse every day it's from michael snow ron jerica sure looks bad losing michael bush we'll talk about michael bush you guys want to talk michael bush have some thoughts on that as well so definitely be on the lookout for that elias says what's up dmac dunn north hollywood says hello dodgers fans i'll be there tonight hello kitty night pajes will make us prouder than a padres parade in april rack them if i'm looking if i see any fire Fire take you see one of these yeah hello kitty tonight at dodgers stadium you got last year's right behind me on my left dunn and andy pajes is about to go off joshua clark over on youtube i percy cream says we have to see Pajes in the show first before we start saying he's better than Bush. Yeah, I mean, Michael Bush has just set a Chicago Cubs record. He's homered five straight games. That's a franchise record. And look, we talked about it a little yesterday. And yes, it absolutely stings to see Michael Bush go and have this level of success, especially when you look at the bottom of the Dodgers lineup. They've been struggling mightily. They haven't been able to get on base and provide ducks on the pond, base runners for Mukio tani and freddie but it's still early and look how about this you're not supposed to root against his success right he's not a dodger he is not coming back right you're not putting that toothpaste back in the tube the deal has been done so look you have to feel good about him and also if you want to look at a silver lining they got zyre hope if you don't know zyre hope yet He's one of the prospects they got in the deal. And they also got Jackson Ferris, two guys that they did not have to keep on that 40-man roster. Because when you've accumulated a lot of talent like the Dodgers have, and you developed a lot of talent like the Dodgers have, you can't keep everyone on that 40-man roster. And those two players, you can develop, and that's what they're doing right now. If you talk to scouts, if you talk to people that are around those two players at the minor league level, they'll tell you they are the real deal. That those are two players that are either A, going to continue tribute for this team at some point or b are going to develop into trade chips they're only going to help this roster so look michael bush is doing what we all thought he was going to do everyone knew he could rake he raked in triple a he's someone that has the unique ability to slug but also sees about four or five pitches per at bat he's got great strike zone awareness he's got great back to ball skills and he's doing what everyone thought he would do here's the thing 
there was just was no spot for him right there just was no seat at the table for him for the Dodgers you couldn't have him at his natural position right now which is first base because Freddie Freeman's there you really can't have him at second base because with the restricted shift did he have the requisite range to be able to play that position at an everyday level well at least the organization they didn't think so and also oh there's this guy they have who wanted to play second base what's his name all oh, right his name is Mookie Betts Marcus Lynn Betts gets what he wants like I told you a couple days ago so Tani's franchise is Mookie's team right so he was going to play second then you look at the third option was he going to play third base can he play third base he can he can do it adequately quickly but you just brought back Max Muncy Max Muncy is having a quality year he's an above average hitter who's done damage at the plate the strikeout is a little too high striking out at a little too high of a clip for me right now for Max Muncy based on his career norms but Max Muncy is a veteran right you win you don't win with young players at the major league level in the World Series. You win with veterans, right? It's a man's league, okay? And as much as I love Michael Bush, Max Muncy's a better option at third base than Michael Bush, right? Then the one argument you could make is, could you throw him in left field? Could you throw him in that corner outfield spot? Theoretically, he could have gotten an opportunity there, and there's no doubt about it that he would have produced more than anyone they're throwing out there these days with, with the guys that they're doing, like Chris Taylor's not happening, and the outfield production from the corner outfield spot not named not named Tosca Hernandez has been extremely underwhelming so there is that but let's go to our first super chat here we got Kermit one Andy Pajes has that Kobe Bryant scowl at the plate Dodgers need Mamba mentality thanks DMAC what up Kermit one hey you know what absolutely I mean I think you see his his swing and that's what really stands out we're gonna talk more Andy pause in a second but yeah look a mindset of mentality you need to have it you need to be extremely mentally tough to be able to succeed at this level because let me tell you what Michael Bush as good as he's been they're gonna adjust to him and that's what it comes down to how do you adjust back when they adjust to you and having a strong mindset is how you're able to get through those valleys because look major league baseball yeah some players have tons of peaks most of them have more valleys than peaks if we're being quite honest we got daniel m listing from ventura california the 805 makes me think of eric elo in the back in the day the 805 in the house we have the mas boxing five dollars dodgers gave up victor gonzalez michael bush who are killing it right now i don't trust the front office at all now when it comes to trades really you don't trust them when they traded for mookie Betts. i mean you don't trust them when they signed otani and teoscar hernandez and traded for tyler glass now who we'll talk about in a second here you look victor gonzalez is someone who he's had his moments 2020 he found it he had the slider working the fastball velocity was sitting around 96 and it's good i'm happy for the guy like i said all these guys that are traded to another organization when they have success when the players that were dealt to that franchise work out whether it be prospects whether it be big league ready talent well guess what next time they see that 310 area code from la and in the 626 area code from friedman in pasadena they know to pick up because they know the dodgers have the goods they know that you can trust their player development and their prospects but with victor gonzalez i will say this let's slow down let's slow down a little bit a 1.5 ERA but a 406 FIP okay and the expected FIP is 620 the expected ERA 375 so point of that is saying he's had some very good luck he has a 158 BABIP the league average is 300 so his batting average on balls in play is at 158 league average is at 300 so at some point when the balls are put in play against Victor Gonzalez, they're going to start getting some hits. But look, like I said, and look at the strikeout rate. He's striking out three batters per nine innings. OK, look, I'm done with seeing relievers that don't punch guys out when it matters most. OK, you need guys who can get the punch in the postseason. That's how you win. So I am not losing sleep over Victor Gonzalez. Will Michael Bush go down as a Paul Canerco type, a Pedro Martinez type, one of those players, the Mike Piazza type, one of those guys that got away? It's very, very possible. But hey, I'm not losing sleep over Victor Gonzalez. But let's do some more comments.
this. I'm going to dive into our three up, three down for the day. I was at Dodger Stadium yesterday for Jackie Robinson Day. First thing I want to say is the Dodgers are such a first class organization because Jackie Robinson Day is such a special day in Major League Baseball. And it's even more special when you're a Dodger fan at Dodger Stadium, the team that he played for. And really cool tradition that the Dodgers have started in recent years is both teams, whoever they're playing yesterday was the Nationals. They meet at the Jackie Robinson statue and Dave Roberts gives a little speech. The opposing manager, Dave Martinez, he gave, gave a nice little speech and it's just a great moment to see all those players in 42. By the way, we talked about it yesterday. You got to thank my personal friend. I'm just kidding. But Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> Ken Griffey Jr. is the guy behind 42. Of course, he back in 97, we had the 50th anniversary of Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier back in 1947. He called Bud Seelig. He said, I wanted to reverse my number, go from 24 to 42 to commemorate Jackie. Bud Seelig said, it's a good idea, but let me call Rachel Robinson, Jackie's wife. And they talked about it and they both came to the conclusion. You know what? It's great that Griffey wants to do it, but how about every player does it? And that's why every player wears 42 on Jackie Robinson day. And definitely wanted to see 42 for the Dodgers step up and get more hits yesterday. I will say that and play a little better, but still, it was just a great moment. And Mackie, Magic Johnson threw out the first pitch. It, just a, a great, a special, special moment. But uh, Noise by Noel, by the way, if you don't know Noise by Noel, he's our social media king here. Noah, I mean, uh, Noel Sanchez, Noah Cameron, of course, a great writer for us. Says, new layout looks fire. Big shout out to producer Antonio and ever, all the work he's put in, Gary and everyone. So definitely getting a lot of compliments on that. Got Montebello in the house. We got another super chat. This is from Daniel M. Actually, we already hit that one, so let's go down a little bit. We got High DMAC. High DMAC from Ensenada Baja. Pajes is a good thing happening now. If he does not work, you can look elsewhere. Victor Banos, sounds like you watched yesterday's show, right? <laughs> because yesterday's show, and we're going to dive right into that. Three up, three down, and we're going to start with an up. And, of course, that up is Andy Pajes. Andy Pajes has been called up. And it was first reported by first reported by yeah Juan Trivia. You had you had Fabian Ardai. It was actually first reported by Francis Romero. So Francis Romero says breaking the Los Angeles Dodgers are calling Cuban outfielder Andy Pajes per sources. He is the number 94 prospect in baseball according to MLB Pipeline. Yeah, so we're talking about a top 100 prospect who is absolutely raking at the minor league level. He's number 94 in MLB Pipeline. He's number 93 in Baseball America. And he had gotten off to a scorching start down at the minor league level. So far this season in 15 games, Pajes was slashing 371, 452, 694, nine extra base hits. He scored 16 runs at 15 RBI. He said five home runs in his last seven games. So, you got Andy Pajes making his debut when the Nationals are going out there. They're running a string of lefties. You have Patrick Corbin, who has been pretty bad for them for a long period of time now. So it's definitely a good situation to make his debut. And just a little rewind on Pajes. Last season, he got to a great start down in Double A. He was raking, and then he was promoted to OKC. But his first game down in OKC, he hurt his shoulder, had to have labrum surgery. So the big question heading into this season was, how quickly do you call up Andy Pajes if he continues to sustain the success and you're not getting the production that you were hoping to get out of the current corner outfielders. And what happened to start of the season? One, Paez hotter than the devil's armpit. Two, Jason Hayward gets injured. Three, the production in left field has been non-existent. Chris Taylor has gone off to the worst start of his career. You just have not gotten enough from Kike Hernandez, who looks a little lost at the plate. He's been platooning with James Alman at the moment as well. Then you got Taylor Trammell, who they brought in because Jason Hayward was injured. Well, guess what? Trammell hasn't got that many opportunities. Yesterday, he had a pretty strong at-bat with runners in scoring position. He ends up going down swinging, and Trammell, 
He's got no more options left. He's the obvious DFA in this situation for Andy Pajes. And look, Jason Hayward, Dave Roberts told us yesterday, Hayward's expected to miss more time. And it just makes perfect sense. What must be done immediately, what must be done eventually should be done immediately. And I think just this is a bold move for this Dodgers organization. If you watch yesterday's show, I made the case for my guy, Miguel Vargas. You guys know how I feel about Miggy Varg. He's put together a strong start down at OKC. But the Dodgers, they opted to go with Pajes. And I think it makes sense. I mean, yesterday, that was the hope. I mean, we dedicated a whole entire 20-minute segment to let's bring up Andy Pajes, right? Because he's got that special hit tool, right? This is someone who, if everything breaks right, you're talking about a player that's a multi-time all-star. They can hit 20 to 30 home runs, but what makes him special is not that he can hit 20 to 30 home runs, it's that he can do that with a 17 to 20% strikeout rate. That's elite at the major league level. You've heard him compared to Jay Buhner of the Mariners. It's kind of got a lot of Mariners themes on this show. But Paez is ready. Paez is ready. This kid can rake. He's got the best outfield arm in the organization. And on top of that, Chris Taylor, Kike Hernandez, Taylor Trammell, they've started nine games with Jason Hayward back. Nine games. Chris Taylor, Kike Hernandez, Taylor Trammell. They've got their opportunities in left field. You know what they've gone? They've gone four for 44. Four for 44 since Jason Hayward has gone down. All four of those hits coming from Kike Hernandez, who is not off to a good start himself. So, look, perfect timing, going up against the Nationals. This team needs a shot in the arm. They need a spark. They need some life. Glad they turned the Pajes already and brought up Andy Pajes. Okay, I'll, show, I'll give myself a bruh, bruh for that one. I'll show myself out, guys. Sorry for that. But look, like I said, Tramel is the most likely DFA in this situation. I think the other question, too, with Tramel is where does he play defensively? He's played mostly center field. He's played mostly right field, the minor league level. And do you really want to thrust him into left field just because Teoscar Hernandez has been playing in right? Or I think what you should do is you put Pajes in right, and then you throw Teoscar Hernandez back in left field where he started the season when Hayward was healthy. I think that makes the most sense because, look, it's hard enough. Look, hitting major league pitching is one of, if not the most difficult thing to do in sports, right? Maybe getting into the ring with prime Mike Tyson back in the day was a little harder than that, but that's just about it. And you don't want to throw in having to establish yourself against big league pitching and saying, okay, let's adjust to the outfield position that you played the least. So I would prefer to see Pajes in right versus left. I hope that's what they do. But let me know down below in the comment section, how high are you on Andy Pajes? Do you think he's going to have a big impact on this team? And kind of getting back to what Victor Banyas was saying, what I said yesterday was this. This team has all the resources, right? They have the prospect capital to go out there and trade for anyone that could be available if you do want to add a piece at the trade deadline. But what if the internal option that you have in Andy Pajes is better than that? And you don't have to give up those prospects, right? So giving him a runway now will allow them to fully assess his capabilities and hopefully give him an opportunity to, if he starts hot, they're going to adjust. He's going to go through a cold stretch. I mean, Freddie Freeman's slumping right now, right? Happens to the best of them. Give him an opportunity to get himself out of a slump, get himself out of a cold stretch, and then you got yourself a big league player, right? So let me know down below in the comments section. I want to hear all your takes on Andy Pajes. And they're going to share a little snippet of an interview I did with Mr. Casey Porter, the prospect guru from Dodgers Daily, where he's probably seen more Andy Pajes than anyone on the planet, if we're being completely honest. And you don't want to miss his take on Pajes. We got Delvey. Pajes will, mark my words, be in the running for rookie of the year look it's still early enough it's still early enough to if he hits anywhere close to the way he's hitting in it, at the big league level then sure why not and that would be big time for this dodgers organization jose gonzalez ct strike three should be dfa i see what you did right there i don't i don't i don't love the ct3 hate but you know i like a burn finish so him. we'll give you a finish him right there we got nando nando in the comment oh look sd has fans now danny cortez honestly i had never met a san diego padre fan outside of san diego until maybe the last you know couple of years and you're starting to see them grow in masses and 
They're right in that high of being the Dodgers, winning their World Series a couple years ago. Pablo Ramos, 11 and 7. Like, come on, we're underperforming. Yeah, 11 and 7 isn't good. 11 and 7, that works out to a 93 win pace, right? <laughs> you didn't spend a 1.2 billion to win 93 games. I'll tell you that much. But still, this team has dealt with some injury issues to their bullpen. You're still trying to establish a rotation as a combination of young starters. You've already lost Bobby Miller for hopefully it's only a couple of weeks Emmett Sheehan has been lost for longer than it was anticipated you're you're out of bruised dark router on Blake Trinan so there's reasons but really this is going to be the next the next down is no, we'll get to that in a second let's use more of your Andy Pye's comments and we'll hit that snippet the little sound but we got Victor will figure things out from BC the right field pavilion too many Dodger fans are freaking out it's April settle down yeah I mean they are freaking out they're absolutely freaking out to the point where yesterday I'm like okay you know what you just have to blow it all up and hope for a quick rebuild right that's how the vibe, that's the vibe I got on the X yesterday it's still incredibly early and look you don't want to be peaking in April right you want to save that for October but uh, here coming up this is a little snippet of a interview I did with Casey Parter this was his take on Andy Pajes and how high he is and what he can do for this team the impact he can have on this club at the big league level this year as far as Andy Pajes, of course, he missed most of the 2023 season with that labrum tear at only 142 plate appearances. But still, this is someone, lots of power, lots of ability. He is someone else who drops some weight. You look at the home run to fly ball rates, the way they're at. I mean, he lifts the ball. He hits a lot of fly balls. But what do you like about Andy Pajes, Casey? Well, first of all, the arm, him and Jose Ramos, I think you could. I would love to see a competition. Oh. Hey, just get Andy Pajes and Jose Ramos. Put them in the outfield and let's let them throw together. And let's see who has a better arm, right? That'd be a hell of a lot of fun, I think, because those guys, they don't have cannons. They have howitzers. I mean, Andy Paw has, I've seen him throw eight to nine to 10 balls that you just, I mean, you're, you're talking about dudes on a professional field that just watch them throw and go, holy smokes. That, you know, I, I know Cody Hosey's caught a couple and it's like, I can't believe I just saw that throw from Andy Paw has, right? Over at third base. So the arm, obviously. It's big time. You mentioned the weight loss, anywhere from 25 to 35 pounds last year. One thing that did for him, it allowed him to play center field. He was playing a lot more center field. So the Dodgers love that versatility. He's played a lot of right field, played some left field last year, played more center field. So if he keeps the weight down, he profiles at any position that you would like him to play. I think right field's probably his everyday position. But again, if you have Mookie Betts out there or whatever that may be, he has the versatility to play whatever role you want him to. You mentioned the fly balls. He had more home runs than any minor leaguer. I believe it was two years ago in the system. His, his home run for fly ball rate is north of 14, which is in the elite category, no doubt about it. And that's because with his bat angle, he's able to create he's able to create lift in his swing without what I call loft, which means he's able to, to get a bat angle that gets the ball in the air without having to lift his hands. And because of that, his strikeout rates aren't insane. You know, guys that 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 swing with a negative bat angle, meaning the barrel below the hands, and they lift the hands, yes, they hit the ball in the air a lot, but boy, do they have a lot of holes in their swing. So I think that's what makes Andy Pajas unique is that he's able to get the ball in the air without having to lift the hands too much. Yeah, it feels like he can just cover all the quadrants yeah. of the zone right there, too. He's not just someone who has like tons of cold zones everywhere. He's really a complete power hitter. I see him as someone who could definitely be that corner outfielder. I mean, yeah, lots of potential, lots of talent there. Now, so yeah, you hear right there. I mean, this is someone who has all the tools to have success at this level. I could not be more excited. I mean, hey, what is he doing his first at bats? Go to you, Antonio. First at bats. Is he leaving the yard? Can you bomb? I'm going to say it's going to be a ground roll double into dead center. Ground roll double to dead center. Or, uh, no, let's go, let's go right field. Let's go right field. To right field? Yes, that's my prediction. I just got a hot shot single. I got a hot shot single finding grass, finding grass. I mean, let's go to a single to right. He's going to get a hit tonight for sure, though. Noel, prediction. Andy Paws first at bat. Home run. Home run? Yeah. Leaving the yard? Okay, where? I'll say, I'll say home run to left. Home run to left, yeah. home run to left. All right, well, we, we'll see. Let will me know see. down below in the comments. What is your prediction for, what is your prediction for Andy Pajes' first at bat? Got a super chat over here from MAS Boxing. We don't win the World Series without a Randy Arozarena in all-in mentality like the Rams. What do you think, bro? 
Well, you guys know I'm all about that all-in mentality, right? And this team is all-in, right? They pushed all the chips in. They've taken off the watch, the earrings. They took the lean on the mortgage. They threw it in there, too. This team is all-in. You don't have to question that. As far as character goes, Teoscar Hernandez is a better hitter than Randy Rosarena. Teoscar Hernandez is a more skilled hitter than Randy Rosarena. He also has that that fun aspect of him that can that he brings to the team you see him with the sunflower seeds you see him playing around with Shohei Otani and his teammates look I love me some Randy Rosarena okay I mean this is a player that a lot of teams would love to have he has a couple more years of team control I he's not on the market yet the Rays are probably open for business for just about any player especially when you get to those later years of arbitration which it comes faster than they really anticipate for a lot of these guys. Look at how what happened with Tyler Glass now, right? I mean, they had one more year, twenty-five million on their deal. They end up trading him to the Dodgers. But yeah, with Randy Rosarena, he'd be a popular Dodger. He's not on the market as of right now. If he does, and Pajes does not live up to the hype, I would absolutely welcome Randy Rosarena with open arms. And I think that he would be a player that the Dodgers would be interested in. Okay. Those are natural trade partners, the Rays and the Dodgers. They've made tons of deals in the past. A Rosarena is an outfielder. This organization, they need outfielders, right? They need outfielders in a major way, not just this year, but in the future makes you wonder though. I mean, Will Smith and Randy Rosarena on the same team. Of course, they had that little moment at the WBC. I don't know if I think my theory on that was Will Smith was just oblivious right you know maybe he's not a big fist bump guy you know I don't think he was gonna you know slap him like the Oscars or something like that I don't think there was any real tension there but still I mean they smooth things out but hey Randy Rosarena target if he becomes available absolutely 100% now my next down my next down for yesterday is Tyler Glass now Tyler Glass now did not have his best start he actually had his worst start as a Dodger and he was grinding he was grinding the entire start and Tyler Glass now is someone that when he's on he takes a backseat to no one. His stuff is as good as any starting pitcher in Major League Baseball. But yesterday, it was a different story. Against the Nationals, he goes five innings, allowed six earned runs on eight hits, allowed two home runs, two walks, five strikeouts. The command just was not there. The command was not there for Tyler Glass now, and he said it after the game. He didn't have the feel for the curveball. You saw him spiking it throughout his start. The slider... Even that was his best pitch as far as the secondaries go. And that was the pitch that he gave up for a home run. So, I mean, that really is what it came down to. Luis Garcia runners on first and second in the fifth. Had him on a 3-2 count. Leaves a cement mixer slider up in the zone. And Garcia, he hits it just over the wall and left. I did like the reaction from Glass now, though. By the way, he gave a big you know, F on the mound. He was very, very frustrated. But we did learn after the game that Glass now was sick. Dave Roberts told us after the game that Glass now was a little bit under the weather. He said that Glass now wouldn't say it. If you go back and look at the footage of the game, you saw him coughing throughout the start. I was right next to him. I asked him about his fastball yesterday, and he just basically didn't look like he was at 100%. The eyes were a little, little glassy. He just did not look a little flush. So, look, he allowed extra base hits in each of those first three innings, the home run to Luis Garcia. And look, I mean, that was going to do it. I mean, he had he had 10 base runners. He was dealing with traffic all night. So I'm not worried about Tyler Glass now. If you look at the history of his starts, he usually has one or two of these per year. So not overly concerned at all whatsoever. Next up, next up, I'm going to give this to Nick Ramirez and Ricky Venasco for this much maligned Dodgers bullpen they made their debut. Ricky Venasco makes his debut. He went two scoreless, two perfect innings, didn't allow a run. The spin rate on the four-seam fastball was well above average. Really impressed by that. And then Ramirez, he got the job and showed some really nice stuff too. So, look, those two guys thrust it into that situation. You're never guaranteed more than a start, more than an inning with this Los Angeles Dodgers team, the way they've been using their op options and they manage their roster this season. So you get those guys, they take it full advantage of it. And how about this? You don't use any of those high leverage arms too. You still got those fresh. So that's an up. Next down I've got, and this is the first time that this man, this player has ever had a down this season. But I got to do it. Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani. Shohei has been the best player 
that I've ever seen at the plate as far as how effortless of a slugger he is and how consistent his at-bats are as far as if there's a pitch in the zone, he's looking to do damage. But so far in the season, he is one for 16 with runners in scoring position. He had an opportunity there in the seventh inning after an Outman leadoff single. A few batters later, Bet single to give the Dodgers runners on first and second. Showtime at the plate. Everyone at Dodger Stadium expected. You know you're good when you don't even expect a hit. You expect a home run. Everyone in that stadium, everyone in the dugouts. So you know what? Showtime is going to go deep. He ends up lining to center on a hard hit ball that had an expected batting average of almost 600. But that would have tied the game. And that was really the last major threat for the Dodgers in this one. And look, one for 60 with runners in scoring position. I'm not going to overreact to that. I will not because Shohei, this is a relatively new phenomenon for him. He's probably at the plate saying, who are those guys in Dodgers uniforms? Why are my teammates standing over on those bags? Who are those guys? Why aren't they in the dugout? He's not used to seeing runners in scoring position. In fact, last season, the player who's at the plate the most with runners in scoring position in all of Major League Baseball, it was Smitty. It was Will Smith. Whereas Shohei Otani, he was at the plate with runners in scoring position less than 40% of the time. It was towards the bottom of the league. That's because the Angels don't have a lot of talent, especially at the bottom of the order. So this is nothing to worry about at all. He's still killing it. But, hey, we had to just throw him on a down at least one time this season. Andy Paez, one for six, or Shohei Otani, one for 16 runners in scoring position. Now, our next, our next up, what are we doing for our next up? Our, actually, let's just do a double down. Let's do a double down for this one. And our next down, and hopefully bringing up Andy Pajes fixes this, but the bottom of the lineup has been awful. And I've been using the horse meme to describe this all season, right? Where the front of it is perfectly drawn. It's the back of the horse. And then by the end, it looks like a toddler drew it, right? That is the bottom of this Dodgers lineup. Eight games of, if you look at, the seventh, eighth, and ninth spots in the Dodgers lineup. They are batting 166, 229, 236. They rank 29th in Major League Baseball in slugging, 29th in on base percentage, 28th in OPS at 466. If you look at those spots in the lineup, they are the worst in essentially every category or bottom two in every category. That's how bad it's been. And you just can't have that. If you want to be an elite team, you need to have a longer lineup. You can't rely on the MV3 plus Will Smith. And look at Freddie Freeman. He's even going through a slump right now. Look at Mookie Betts. He slowed down a little bit on the road. And you just can't rely on those guys all year because that takes its toll. Yes, they're capable of it. Yes, they're talented enough to carry the load. But then the postseason rolls around and they're out of gas because they've been doing 90% of their group project the entire year. So they'll get an A for the regular season, but will they ace the final, right? Maybe not because they don't have a lot of bandwidth left because you had to carry the load all season long. And James Alman is the one guy I will say he is the one guy that has shown promise. James Altman is the only guy that you can look at some of the uh, expected numbers and say, you know what? This is someone who's at least hitting the ball hard. His numbers should be better. Altman slashing 173, 283, 306. And you look at the expected numbers. I mean, he should be getting better results than that. But unfortunately, that isn't the case. His ex-WOBA, his expected WOBA, his expected weight on base average is actually higher than Teoscar Hernandez. It's at 329. Teoscar is at 314. And Teoscar is slashing 275, 333, 536. So he's slugging 536. Altman 308. His on base is 333. Altman's is 283. But some of the expected numbers should say, look, Altman should be having better results. So I think Altman's going to pop pretty soon. Altman is definitely going to pop pretty soon. So be on the lookout for that. Last up... Last up for three up, three down is Landon Knack. Landon Knack is another young Dodgers prospect that's going to get his opportunity. And Knack has been extremely consistent throughout his big league, throughout his minor league career. He's been one of the kind of, look, his ceiling isn't crazy high. His ceiling is an ace. His ceiling is a number two. Maybe if everything works out, he's a number three starter. But his floor is high. He's someone that, if we look at the bus potential, I think it's very low 
because of how consistent he's been throughout the minor league level, the improvements that he's made, lost a lot of weight. He's gotten the best shape of his career. It's a 344 ERA through 243 innings at the minor league level, but he's gotten better. Last season at OKC, he posted a 251 ERA in 22 appearances between AA and OKC. And this year at AAA, he's taking the ball three starts, a 16-4 to strikeout to walk ratio so seven runs through 15 and two-thirds innings not necessarily focused with the results how many runs given up more focused on some of the other peripherals that speak to okay he's ready to go and he's gonna get an opportunity baseball america they have him as the 11th best prospect in the dodgers system so hey he's a back of rotation type of starter but guess what the dodgers they could use a back of the rotation type of starter and he's someone that has earned his opportunity and I think the maturity level that he has, he's not going to come up and be a Bobby Miller, right? Don't expect that, but come up and expect solid. Expect someone who knows how to pitch. He's more of a pitcher than a thrower than any of these young pitchers I've seen come out of the system in the last couple of seasons. But let me know down below in the comment section, what are your thoughts on Landon and Knack? Are you high on Landon Knack? Do you think he's someone that can contribute? But let's read those comments. We got some more super chats down below. We got Alex Renteria and Pajes will be better once he sees Freeman and Mookie's approach. He'll learn from them. Yeah, that's a great point, Alex Renteria. And I talked to James Alvin about this. It's the just absorbing the greatness of these generational first ballot Hall of Fame type players, right? I mean, Freeman, first ballot, well, he's got some work to do. But Mookie, he's a guy who could be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And their approaches and their routines. Their consistency is what really sticks out. And I think that Pajes saw that during spring training. And I think that just being around that, being exposed to that at this level, it's definitely going to only help matters. And look, I've heard people like the case that last year, Miguel Vargas, it, it almost was a detriment because he had a lot of voices, right? He had a lot of voices. He had J.D. Martinez. He had Skoyak. He had all these voices kind of giving him a lot of pointers on how to hit. Look, it's the player's responsibility to kind of know what works for them. And one thing I will tell you about this Dodgers organization by talking to the players is they'll give you all the data. They'll give you every metric, every analytic but they won't ever force it onto you. They'll never make you go out there and do this, do that, hot zones, force plates, whatever it may be. They're not going to force you to do it, but they're also going to hold you accountable and say, you know what, this is a performance-based business. We just want the results. How are we going to get them? We just want them. Now, the good thing about these players, though, is they embrace it because it's smart to embrace it, right? I mean, at the end of the day, you got to go out there and compete. Your brain's not a computer. You're not just, like, processing this stuff like it's the Matrix. When you're at the plate, you're not a robot, you're not the Terminator. But just knowing how to best utilize it is what really takes these guys to the next level. And James Alman has said as much. I mean, they completely broke down his swing. They told him he had a swing like a caveman. So now it's uh, completely been rebuilt, and he's having success. Now we got Chico Dopeness. I like that name. Let me get a fire take for the day. Chico Dopeness. Pajes and Teo are going to be the best of friends. Just watch. Okay, so you got a, a little buddy cop movie written for Pajes and uh, Teoscar Hernandez. I'd love to see it. I like Teoscar Hernandez's vibe with everyone, man. I'm telling you, this guy's a breath of fresh air in the clubhouse in the dugout and look also too the man just rakes the man just goes out there and rakes and he's gonna be one of those guys that he's gonna he's like your favorite player's favorite player that's why i say about teoscar hernandez because yeah he's not gonna be the otani or mookie types but that is a player that you put in the middle of a lineup and you surround him with talent that ends up getting the big hit in the big game in the big moment, right? And he absolutely has that in spades. And also, my man's trying to get a bag. <laughs> my man's on a business trip trying to get paid, signing that one-year deal. I mean, just imagine you're free, you're gonna be a free agent and you're on the Toronto Blue Jays where you're raking with that great lineup and they trade you to the Mariners in your walk year. I mean, that's just some bad luck right there, right? You're going to the Mariners where it's the hit, the, it's the worst hitting ballpark, especially for a right-handed hitter in Teoscar Hernandez. You got Roy Estrada. What up, Roy? Always rock with us. Appreciate you. Uh, Pajes will adjust. This is a star in the making. Finally. Okay. Lots of hype around Pajes. So we got K-Dog. I would rather watch Pajes K than CCT3 embarrass himself anymore. I've had enough. That dude 
has his mega slumps. That's from K-Dog. Yeah, well, why don't we just turn this into the seventh inning stretch at this point? Let's hit this. Let's hit this. There we go. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think at some point you got to save Chris Taylor from himself. I mean, this is no slight to the guy. Chris Taylor has done so much for this organization. Clutch hits. He's been a core member, a foundational member of this run that the Dodgers have been on since he stepped onto the scene. I mean, 2017 hits the leadoff home run, first pitch of the World Series. But he is struggling so badly right now. He looks so lost at the plate. I mean, he's lost. I mean, he just can't find. It. He's like me looking for my car at the Dodger Stadium parking lot after, you know, 10 micheladas. I, he looks lost at the plate, unfortunately. And I think it's not over, though. I see people out there that want to trade Chris Taylor. Really? I mean, he still has two more years on that contract, uh, on that four-year $60 million deal. Tommy Pham just signed a minor league deal. You really think teams out there, even if the Dodgers paid down a good portion of that contract, are going to trade for Chris Taylor looking the way he does right now? Probably not, right? On the same token, like we talked about early in the show, it's a man's league, right? It's a veteran's league. It's an experienced league in the postseason. I think you still have to find a way to give Chris Taylor a reset. Uh, I asked Dave Roberts the other day about Chris Taylor, and he told me that he's a core member of this team, that he's scuffling right now, that he's a, always been a streaky player, but that every time he's at the plate, he feels like something good is going to happen. And yes, that's just Dave being a a breath of fresh air always being a glass half full type optimist guy and he's the ever optimist and i appreciate that about dave but i think it's a little more complicated than that i think he needs a true reset where you give him an extended period of time down to arizona and you try to flatten out that swing just a little bit to allow himself to get more contact i mean he did have an rbi yesterday right he did have a sacrifice yesterday so you have to give him a little bit of that but i definitely think a reset is due and a phantom il stint could be on the way we got uh no ortega are you more excited for pajes than you were for outman absolutely i would say it's probably pretty close i think with outman it was a little different i mean both were essentially injury related right i mean you had gavin lux gets injured then outman gets an opportunity this year hayward gets injured and the lineup is scuffling so you give him an opportunity i'm always excited for debuts i mean if it's a pitcher uh, anyone i mean it's just exciting these guys are living out their lifehood dreams their lifelong dreams since they were little kids a dream is going to be realized today and this week for multiple players yes it was ricky Vanasco. today it's gonna to be andy pajes possibly landon knack tomorrow so absolutely i'm excited as far as outman goes the thing about outman is you remember his debut Debut against the Rockies I mean he went crazy I mean he went crazy against the Rockies in his debut and there was a lot of hype surrounding him with that and also the fact that Cody Bellinger had left and you're looking okay who's gonna be that next center fielder for the Dodgers he had kind of already been this kind of mythic figure down at the minor league level so there was that but I think with Pajes I think that the ceiling is higher for him I think with James Outman Look, last year, James Alma was a 4.4 war player, okay? <laughs> Teams paid $30 million for that kind of production. Let's not forget about that. He's someone that is an above average defender, can hit you 23 home runs, can provide pop, hits the ball hard. It's just, Pajes is a younger prospect that has the ability to be a special hitter. So for me, I think the way this lineup is right now, I'm a little more excited for Andy Pajes and also probably a little bit of recency bias. You know, it's a a little bit of you know Buzz Lightyear and Woody kind of thing. Aloy Alvarez says, it's a long season. We are going to be fine. Too early to panic. Just got to get it done. Let's go, Dodgers. I'll give you a you win finish for that. Him. It's actually the finish him button, but it says you win. But uh, Ray Soto, I know we suck right now, but are we bringing him up too early? Ray Soto, I think that you could make the case that it might be just a little bit too early as far as someone that probably could benefit from some more at-bats down at the AAA level. But I will say, a lot of people will tell you the Pacific Coast League isn't a great league for development, right? It's not a great league for developing players. And the bottom of the lineup, I gave you the numbers. They're not kind of bad. They're statistic. I bring my facts to the fight. The facts show they are one of the worst lineups at the seven eight nine spots in all of major league baseball and would you bet on those guys to turn around what i say on yesterday's show i literally says on yesterday's show i said if chris taylor was at the plate 
and Andy Paz was at the plate, who would you bet on? If it was your own money, you're taking it out of your pocket, out of your wallet, right? Who would you bet on to get a hit there? It'd be Andy, it'd be Paz, right? It'd be Andy Paz, right? It wouldn't be Chris Taylor, right? And if you know his history and the fact that this is someone who has been on the Dodgers radar as far as their expectations for him because of his hitting ability, you know that it's worth the excitement, but is it too early? Look, no one's ready for the show, right? It's it, everyone is too early, but you just never know until you go out there and those spikes hit the dirt and those spikes hit the grass and you give it a go. And I think that this team needs to see if they are going to rely on some of these internal options early, like Andy Pajes, or are they going to say, you know what? Hey, we got to go out there. We got to go to market. We got to go explore somewhere else. So I actually don't think it's too early. I think that is actually perfect timing. You look at the lefties of the Nationals. You look at the series. Let's do it, right? What must be done eventually should be done immediately. Peter Pan Dam. I like that. Uh, D-backs and Padres look hungrier. Dodgers need some vibes. Just expecting to win isn't good for chemistry. That's from Peter. Look, a couple of things right there. Are they hungrier? I don't think so. I think this Dodgers team is pacing themselves. It's a marathon, not a sprint. What Mookie Betts said rings a little true. Anytime you're playing the Dodgers, good chance you're on MLB Network. Good chance you're on ESPN. Good chance that people are going to be in the stands, right? A Dodger stadium, you're getting at least 40,000 plus. If it's a home game, you're selling out that, right? That's one of your premier games. So it's other teams' World Series. I don't think it's a lack of hunger, though. This team actually has an edge to it for the Dodgers this year. So I, I disagree with that. Uh, Paul says, call up Vargas too, put him at third and Muncie at second. I, I, it's an interesting idea. And you know, I'll never push back on an idea because I love your guys' ideas. And I'll give you a full take for that one. The thing about that is that we don't know if Max Muncie has the range post-restricted shift to be able to get it done at the keystone position. So I think they're fine where they're at right now. That's something I would explore if you're looking for depth, if you move off of Lux at some point. K-Dog, you cannot trade CT3 for a plate of rice and beans at this point. He is lost. Wow. That is just a, a serious Finish. burn. Lawrence Jerez, good afternoon, DMAC. I'm glad we're giving the young guys a chance. We need a little change in the lineup. I can't wait to see Pajes' first at bat. Absolutely. Alexandra, you, why are the Pajes, uh, why are the Padres looking way better than the Dodgers? That's the question. Yeah, look, they're relevant now. Will they be relevant in October? That's my question. And I don't want to peak right now. I'm glad this is happening because you need to get through your first slump. You need to figure things out. You need to evaluate your bullpen. The Dodgers are going to be just fine. But that is going to do it for this episode of Dodgers Dugout Live. Keep finding a way in the chat, guys, because you can always kind of go back and forth. I'm seeing these debates. We'll be back later. I'm going to hit a post game show. I'm going to be going to the game, giving you guys all the coverage from Andy Pajes' big league debut. It's a debut day. It doesn't get any better than this. So look out for that. Also, follow us over on Instagram and the X. Follow me, Doug McCain, on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Also, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the number one Dodgers YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. Also, comment done down below so you are eligible remember i like this the knickknack paddy whack someone said that you guys are firing away with the sorry to your bosses by the way watching this during work i know i'm hurting productivity right now so yeah guys talk to you guys later remember nothing brings together quite like dodger baseball and until next time think blue bleed blue 